I was out this past Saturday and I was seeing single bucks come through almost every set. And I thought something's going on. I should be seeing more bucks than this. So I worked my way in and the leaves are super crunchy. Almost impossible to get in there quietly. I made it to the bottom of the tree that I haven't sat in yet this season. Got down on my knees, set my bow on the ground. I was just getting ready to take my tree stand off my back. I looked to my left, here comes a buck, and another buck, and another buck. Five bucks almost ran me over. My last sit, which was this past Saturday, October 4th, I made some critical mistakes. Actually, my last two sits, I went in. I never had any of my camera gear on. And we all know that's the number one rule. If you're filming, camera's gotta be rolling all the time. And I took that for granted. This past Saturday, I went into a spot where there's three different funnels and I know there's a couple bucks running. And I wanted to push up another 40 yards. And the leaves were real crunchy, it was pretty dry out. I made quite a bit of noise getting in, not intentionally. I got to the bottom of the tree, I wanted to climb up. As soon as I got down on my knees, I still had all my gear on my back. I laid my bow on the ground. And here comes one buck, two bucks, three bucks, five bucks come through, almost run me over about four feet. I had my phone in my hand. About 10 seconds after those bucks ran by me, another buck come up, actually a shooter, about 20 yards and stopped right in front of me. There was a laurel bush in front of me. I was between the laurel bush and the tree I was gonna climb. He could still tell there was something there. So he stopped, stared at me for a couple seconds, turned around and blew off. So I started getting my pack off my back. I just got it onto the ground. My bow was still laying on the ground. And pretty soon a giant buck came down from the towards the top of the mountain, straight down. Bright fire orange antlers. About 40 yards, I still couldn't get a shot. I was behind that laurel brush. And he also spotted me. He couldn't make out what I was, but he also knew something wasn't right. He didn't blow off, but he turned around and trotted up back where he came from. I think he could just come down to scope out what was going on, see what all the ruckus was about. So, to not have any of your cameras on and still not even be able to get a shot is pretty disappointing. So I finally made it up this tree. About 45 minutes later, I had a small spike come right underneath my tree. So that was eight bucks total within a two hour period. No cameras. My bow wasn't ready, I wasn't ready, and I couldn't shoot the spike that came under my tree. So, I'm trying to get this figured out. Got back out here today. I'm just gonna take a slow walk up towards that area. It's up the mountain. See, the problem is, I know there's three shooter bucks in there that I'm after. There's always a west wind. Once in a while, there might be a southeast wind, but just about every time I go in there, it's a west wind. And the problem is, there's three funnel systems that run up the mountain on an angle this way. 
and they're up on the third funnel system running back and forth and they're bedding right up above the funnel system and that first funnel goes up the mountain on an angle this way so I can't go in on the left side because the wind's always blowing west and they're bedding over here on the west if I try to sneak in over on the west it gets so thick in there I mean you can't see just a couple feet in front of you to walk in there so really trying to figure out how I can get in on these bucks I just got out of my truck a few minutes ago I'm only about 40 yards 50 yards from the road on my way in and you look down I get a set of scrapes there Just sign everywhere. <laughs> Let's get in there and try to see what happens. So I'm working my way down to the creek. I'm heading in from the total opposite from where I usually come in. I usually come in about 400 yards to the west. I think I go down an old log road and up the creek. This time. I'm on the east side, cutting straight down to the creek. See if I catch anything bedding or move down here in the bottom before I get to the creek. And I work my way up to where I'm seeing those bucks. I'll tell you what, it gets pretty frustrating sometimes because not in a million years did I think I'd see eight bucks together this past Saturday. It was about 1.30 in the afternoon. Yeah, it's pretty tough getting in here because the leaves are still pretty crunchy. There were quite a few times that I was scouting before archery season. And I'd come down through here, sneak through, and catch deer bedding down here. Sometimes they like to bed behind the, a big fallen over tree. They'll lay behind those roots. I'm almost afraid to turn my camera off because I've done that too many times this year already. And I'm trying to take my time in here, but... Man. Those deer are hearing me coming 200 yards away with the way the ground is right now. One of those unfortunate things. Coming up on a couple of these fallen over roots. Like I said, quite a few times I'd come in through here. Find deer bedding down behind those roots. I really like coming down in here just after it rains. Or if we have a light rain, I come down and walk through here. I started my scouting down here in preseason. And the first day I came out scouting, it was raining. And I had the same problem with my cameras. I jumped the buck right here. And he went running straight across in front of me. I had the camera on record. And I never paid attention to how full the SD card was. So it totally deleted the footage that I got for that day. Looks like the leaves were freshly kicked up here. Let's see if they're crossing the creek here at some point. I'm definitely using this as a crossing point. Looks like it's been worn in for quite a while. It's pretty heavy over there. There's the log I watched a bear play on last year. I was sitting right over here in these pines. And that bear crossed the creek up here. And walked right down along the creek edge. And I stopped him right there. I whistled at him. Made him stop there. 
and he ducked his head down like he was a dog in trouble. And then just slowly walked back up there to that log, which is probably where he was heading. And he was doing some digging up there. About 10 minutes, he came back down this way. And it's something white in its mouth. I don't know what it was. Must have buried some food a couple days prior and come back to get it. I made it up here where I wanted to be. I'm at the bottom of a tree because I left my tree stand in here about 40 yards further north. I get in here and the squirrels are going crazy about 75 yards to the east. And they've been at it for like five minutes now. Something's going on up there. <laughs> anyway, I'm tucked in between three trees right here. So I'm in here pretty good. And about 150 yards up that direction a couple bucks bedding and this is that ridge I was talking about right here it starts getting really thick with laurel and dogwoods and it gets thick enough to the point where you can't really see in there and that transition line goes up the mountain on an angle and here the wind usually goes to the west that way I've been wanting to push up in there so bad, but with the west wind, I can't go up there if he's bedding straight up. I'd have to go in over to the right, but man, it's pretty rough and thick up through there, and I'm afraid if I push up further that way, I'm going to blow everything out that's up there. <laughs> so I'm just trying to get myself in a position or one of these bucks will come down through here, maybe chasing a doe.